Hello and welcome to a new Google Sheet tip in Practical Sheet. Today we're going to talk about pivot tables. Just I'm going to teach you a few tips and tricks about pivot tables, things that we use a lot for data analysis. Okay, so if you want to see more pivot table videos, please just let me know in the comments. But if you want to download the template of these and more than 80 videos that I have in the channel, you can go to the Patreon page where also you can ask me any kind of question about your projects. So let's begin. Th this is not an intro to pivot tables. If you want, I could do it, but it's just uh, some tips for the ones, for the people that already use them. So I'm not going to get into the detail of what is a pivot table. I assume you already know. If not, please let me know and I can do an intro video. For now, I'm just going to give you a couple of tips. The first one, when you insert pivot tables. Remember that b before you had it in data, now you have it in insert. When you insert a pivot table, you have two options. You can insert it in the new sheet, that is what you one almost always does, or you can do an existing sheet that sometimes it's useful. So you just select where do you want to do it and you hit OK, create, and that's it. Okay, so you can have it in the same. It's not always recommended, but sometimes is useful. Let's go back. Second tip, always have easy headers. So always have headers and always have easy headers because when you start to get advanced and try to do, for example, calculated values or calculated fields, you're going to have a hard time if the headers are not easy. What do I mean by easy? Try to maintain, like this is a good example of easy. Try to maintain everything in the same uh, caps. For example, this everything is in lower. If you have spaces, maybe it's better to separate them with, a, with this line down. Try not to have too many spaces. Try not to have too many words. And try always to have a header. Let's say we don't have a header here. And let's go to insert and pivot table. So you're going to have this with column E and then you don't know what is it. So very important to have headers and headers that speak for themselves. The nice thing about pivot tables in sheets or nice almost all the time, maybe when you're a power user and you have a lot of data, this is not such a nice feature, is that the pivot table updates itself. So if I say product here, then go to my pivot table here, automatically the headers update. So this is really, really nice. And also for the data, for example, Let's put in our data in our metric, the quantity. So here is 5,498. If I change any quantity here, I'm going to change this to a hundred. So automatically it changed to 5,597. So this is really nice, but there are some things that are not so dynamic by nature. For example, here I have a table that has a thousand one records or rows. I'm going to add 10 more. Actually, I added, I added a thousand more, but don't worry. Now I'm going to add a couple of, of fields. So this is 1001, 1002, and 1003. So let's count here. I'm not going to add, I'm just going to count to say a thousand. And you can see that it hasn't added the new ones, 1001, 1002, and 1003. Why? because if you see when I created my table, the range was A1 to 1001. This is one of the neatest tips that I'm going to give you today is how to make it that it always updates itself. So the ones that already know a bit more about sheets know that you can leave the last part of the range open without a number, but this won't work in pivot tables. Let's do another pivot table. And you can see that here it says A1 to J1004. So what I could try to do is remove this, this 1004 and do create. This should change it. But when you see here, it puts a limit. Here is 2001. So actually the best option, the first best option is to put it up until the row you have and put a lot of rows, but it's not a good practice to have a lot of empty rows in Google Sheets. So if in a year you already have filled up these 2001 rows, then you would have to change it again. So this is not a good practice. So let's try it another way. We're going to do again, insert pivot table. 
but I'm going to change this. Instead of removing the number that you see that when it creates the pivot table, it adds it again, I'm going to remove both numbers. I'm going to leave just the letters A to J. Let's create. And you can see here that I don't have any numbers. So let's remove again, just for sakes of this, let's remove all these rows. And just for curiosity, let's see what happens here in the other ones. It removes automatically, so it's not a problem. But here it still remains without numbers. So let's do our count again. Let's put the quantity here in our values, but we're going to count it. So this is a thousand. Because I haven't put any. Actually, let's count this column A. This ID. Let's count this ID. Okay, so I have a thousand and three. And if I add new ones, going to add three more. It automatically adds thousand and six. Just one small caveat with this is that, for example, let's uh, add some more, five more. And I start doing a pivot table with more things, for example, first name. I'm going to put the first name here, Rose. So I'm always going to have this empty row that doesn't have a first name. When I have this A to J, it will only count in my sheets the empty rows. So it will say you have six rows that don't have a first name. So how do we fix that? This is the only fix we need to do. We need to do a filter. It could be with any of the fields, for example, in this case, it could be ID. Let's remove actually these IDs. I'm going to remove the IDs that are empty. How do I do it? With a value condition in my filters. So I'm going to drag the ID down and I'm going to say that I'm going to filter by condition and the condition is that is not empty. That's it. I hit OK and it works perfectly. I could do it by another way, filtering the values and removing the blanks, but this won't work on the long run because the new things I add, it won't add it. So the best thing is to filter by a condition. Okay. This is another tip. I don't want this to be a very long video. I'm going to give you two last grouping tips. So I'm going to remove the first name. I'm going to remove the ID. I'm going to leave this filter ID always. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put dates on my row and it will bring the dates and let's say quantity on the values. What happens if I want to see this by month or by year? One option is to, in my table, to add the month and the year here and with the formula like month or year using the date, but I don't need to do this in tip people tables. It's a nice feature of people tables. I can group this here just by right clicking, very similar to Excel. Excel does it more automatically, but this works good. I'm going here to create people date group and I have a lot of options. For example, I could say month and it updates it by month or I could say year and it updates it by year. Let's go back to month. The bad thing about month is that if I have a lot of years here is adding all the Januarys of all the years and normally I won't want that. I want to separate them by year. So there are two ways of doing this. The first one is to do this year month. So it separates them. And the other one is doing both one field for year and one field for month. That is what Excel does automatically. So let's go here, right click, let's say month. And then we're going to bring date again to the rows. I'm going to click it again, right click, create pivot date group. And now I'm going to do year. And then the year I could drag it back here, or maybe even better can put it in the columns. So now I have my year separated and my months separated. So now I can work with it in, with filters in our rows, in our columns, and you can start working with them as you want. I think the pivot tables in Excel are much, much better than sheets, but I think that for very basic analysis, the pivot tables in sheets are much more intuitive, easy to use. You don't have to know a thousand things like in Excel. So it's, it's easier, but it's not as powerful as Excel. Okay. So maybe when you want 
to do custom ordering or things like that, it may be a bit tricky. The last trick I want to show you is let's leave the quantities here. I'm going to put the products in the rows. Actually, this is not the last one, but close to last. I could group some of the products in categories without having to do another column here again similar to the month thing for example these appetizers i would like to group them in one category that is called appetizers so i could right click again very similar to excel create pivot group and then give it a name appetizer and i could do other groups for example apple so i'm going to choose with control all these apples right click create people group and here i forgot to put one and just click apples and maybe this apple star part and i also want to put it there so i just need to select this and select this other one with control and create people group and it just added but it changed the name so i need to change it again so i could do categories on the go the thing is different from excel that excel leaves a new field here that I can use later. If I delete this, if I delete the group product or I change my, my data table, it will I will lose it. So just be careful with this, but it's a nice feature. Now, the last one I want to, to do is, I'm going to put the quantity in my rows. So I have these quantities, actually better the amount. So I have a lot of amounts. So I could group how many orders I have or how many products I have sold with some amounts. So I'm going to bring the quantity to the values and here I have it, but maybe I want to group them. One way is to do when I have numeric values instead of discrete values as the categories or the months or the product. When I have numeric values, it would be a lot of work to group them one by one. What I could do is I stand in any of it, right click, then I do create pivot group rule and I'm going to say that the minimum value will be zero. The latest, let, let's see what is the latest value. The biggest value is uh, 10, I think. Yeah, 10. So right click again, create pivot group. The minimum value is zero. The maximum value is 10. And I want to divide it in intervals by 2.5. So I have my intervals. So between zero and 2.15, I've sold 1,443 units and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is nice to group, easy to group by ranges. Now, the last tip is that I could change, for example, sum of quantity doesn't look that good. So I can say quantity and group amount doesn't look that great. So ranges, a okay, price ranges. So I could change my titles, very similar to Excel. And here in the group, you can see that then you can change it, the group, and all that so this is it i hope you like it i know that there are a lot of other tips so just let me know if you like this and we can do a series to or just give me your what what other tips do you have this is not a tip but it's a really nice thing that sheets changed is that you can close this a year ago in 2022 at the beginning we couldn't close this and it was really really annoying especially when you had a lot of pivot table actually one last i just for <laughs> i just remembered one last tip and is that your pivot table lives in the first cell, in the cell that is up and to the left, this uh, superior left corner. This is where it lives. What do I mean? That if you want to copy a pivot table, you don't have to select the whole pivot table. You just need this first cell. For example, if you delete this first cell, you delete the whole pivot table. It's like the array formulas and the queries and all that. They live in the first cell. So if you want to copy it, you don't have to select it all. Here is a very simple, but what happens if I have a very, very big table with a lot of rows and columns? You just need to paste to copy A1 or the, the first cell, Control C, and then Control V, and you paste it. Okay, this is our also a neat trick for pivot tables. I know there should be much, much more tips, if you like this, we can do a second part. Thank you so much. See you next time.